Yo, yo, yo. Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. Hey, wait. I'm going to start like a YouTuber does. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Bitcoin Podcast, <laughs> episode 336. Uh, I'm your first host, D. I am your second host, Dr. Corey Petty. And I'm the third host who just secured two beautiful Voice 65 keyboards. Oh, this guy. This guy. Is, he, oh was, he, was, he was trying to tell me about, like, the intricacies of this keyboard and a bunch of other stuff and, like, glazed over. Like, I'm a nerd, right? I get into nerdy <laughs> stuff. And the keyboard hobby is nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesse. Oh, yeah. I'm impressed, bro. You're layered like an onion, bro. Good on you. Good on you yeah, for securing, shot. like, a, a, a nice yeah. quality item for your hobby. <laughs> Thanks. I hope you're that a renaissance your, I hope that your fingers thank you for it when you're typing on it and your ears are like, oh, that click sound. No, no, there's not going to be a click. It's going to be a thack and a thuck, Corey. Whatever. Oh, whatever. Okay. Sure. <laughs> click. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be real clicky. The clicking sounds are going to be real loud. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're butchering my hobby. A thack and a, a, thack and a thuck? Thuck. Interesting. Thock, D. Use the right term. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Back in a thock. All right. So, all right. I was going to take that somewhere. We have an interview uh, yeah, today. So let me do this, Corey. I got this. Shut the fuck okay. up. Okay. My bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, all right. This is for the first time listeners. If you, this is the first time listening to the Bitcoin podcast. You probably got here because you Google searched. And you're like, oh, Bitcoin, I heard about that. That's expensive now, right? I want to buy it now instead of one that's less expensive. All right. So let me tell you what you are going to get from this show. You're going to get me, Jesse, and Corey, and sometimes Danny, Daniel, sometimes Alicia, uh, talking about very general, maybe philosophical, maybe things that are really at depth uh, topics about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. What you're not going to get is like, Oh, the price of banana coin is $25 today. It's an all-time high. Oh, the price banana of this coin. is a 15 cents. You might want to buy. Is there a banana coin? Uh, the price of raspberry. There's uh, got to be. There's got to be. I'm checking it. Keep going. Yeah, it's a dollar sign B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyways. Uh, yeah, you're not that. We're not going to be like... Hey, uh, get get your uh, moon token. <laughs> moon. We promise, promise, promise. Bananacoin.io. Oh, there is banana coin. Oh, my there God. There you go. Oh, Alicia coming in the clutch. Um, so, you know, speaking of which, I do want to talk a little bit about price because the price went down for Bitcoin. But I think it went down for good reason. I think it's no mystery that that Mt. Gox situation is finally coming to a resolution. And when you've got $5 billion worth of Bitcoin that's about to be unleashed on people, they're going to sell. Like, people have been waiting for that Bitcoin for years, and they're finally getting it back. And there's probably all kinds of changes they wanted to make in their life. So they're going to sell the shit out of that token. Is that what's they're happening? I thought sell. it was going to. I don't think it's going to people. Like, wasn't that all consolidated and bought up? It's going to the people. Yes, it's going to the people that had the money to hire the lawyers to sue the people to get the Bitcoin, right? 
And if you got that much money, you're probably still going to sell because your profit on the amount that you paid, um, the, the, the amount that you paid for the legal fees and the lawyers is probably going to be phenomenal. So, you know, um, that's it. Um, Spurbank is also something I wanted to talk to you guys. I think I, this is something that we talk about a lot. It's core. It's something that you've heard me say a lot, but I do feel as if that we just created, instead of doing all this amazing decentralization and taking power away from the powerful and putting it back to the people, all we did is create the last boss of middlemen because now, uh, I started to see stories like Spurbank, or I think it's how you say it, S-B-E-R. It's that really popular bank, um, I think, in Europe. Yeah, it's in Europe. And they uh, they now got this, like, special license to create a central bank digital currency. Like, they created a stable coin, right? And so it's like, oh, okay, well, there we go. You know, they're going to make the rules with their little private stable coin. And then they're going to slowly, like, retrofit crypto into their rules and we just created monster we've created monsters it's like frankenstein's monster i feel like i need to read that book again to understand how this is going to play out but i'm pretty sure we die which is worse like is are the monsters that we're creating (laughs) a bigger detriment than the positive outcomes of the tech what the technology is giving us I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure in the book, the monster and Frankenstein die. I don't see that happening. We still have nuclear power, so. Okay, I don't know. This analogy is getting loose at this point. At least you said they do both die. <laughs> but I don't know. That's, that's, but that's what you have to yeah, wait, right? right? That's, 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 the, right. that's what you have to do when there's a technology that enables people, both good and bad, to do things. And if... Like, okay, cool, we've enabled permissionless money that has no borders and it's, it's in control by central authorities that you can trust that allows for digital scarcity and all of the things that can be built from that, which we have yet to like really discover in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it'll, we allow the things that this movement initially tried to circumvent to become stronger and do what they do better. So what's worse? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think I'm just trying to stack my cheese bread. And hopefully, it doesn't get stale. You know what I'm saying? I would I'm speaking like to... in only analogies this episode, by the way. <laughs> I'm I like definitely it. trying to like. I want to make. I want to make enough money that I have to worry about money. That's 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 the goal, right? I don't. Yeah, but I, I hate it. I don't where... want to care about money. I would rather just like do whatever I want to do and not really care. But once you start caring about money, you don't stop caring about money. It never, st- it never, that you don't just cut that off. It's like once you open the Pandora's box, it's there. Like, look at Jesse. He's a money hungry motherfucker. That's all he ever talks about. <laughs> and I was like, Jesse, this is, I'm like, Jesse, this is way too extreme, bro. Uh, Why are you like that, Jesse? You know, you know what they say when you, when you, when you get money, all you think about is keeping it. I think so? And growing it. That's true. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've i watched large numbers turn into small numbers, and it hasn't really affected my digital life much in the process of like being in crypto over these years. You got to buy keyboards, Corey. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got a keyboard right here. It's great. It's got Cherry MX red silent switches. It's doing yeah. its job. Hey, you know, what works, works. Mm-hmm. I buy computers. I, I don't buy just one part yeah. of it. Speaking of which... <laughs> Me, Today's episode is brought to you by. <laughs> no, that's, that's valid. I'd buy both. Best like, yeah. Logitech, best in the game at getting yourself a nice forty-five dollar keyboard that works just fine for all you GPPs out there. <laughs> now, if you're more Jesse's, now, if, if you're more Jesse's speed, uh, then this episode can be brought to you by Razer if you want to. Okay. Uh, you know, a nice hundred fifty dollar keyboard with some clicks and some clacks, not some thack and some thought whatever the fuck y'all said but you know get, get either one of these people are sponsors you know I'm, yeah well yeah. you know they could be this episode is also you're listening to you but no i'm kidding um, uh yeah let's talk about uh so 
I'm not talking about Craig Wright, so just throw that away. He's, he's suing for – he's being Craig Wright. No one cares. He's not going to get anything done. Hey, we've got a new president since the last episode. Um, well, you guys want to talk about that? That's something well, that did US happen. Well, the U.S. has a new president. Let's not be – Well, that's we. Like, Xenocentric. We, we as people. We actually have a president now. <laughs> yeah. That's true. We'll see. I can't say that I'm not not happy about it. I'm glad we have a president instead of a janitor uh, that dresses sharp in the office. Uh, it feels good to have some leadership. So that's all I'll say about it. You guys already know how I feel about Trump. I made that very aware like four episodes ago. And if you're still listening and you still like Trump, unsubscribe from our shit. The fuck? I've already told you what to do. So... Um... Yeah, uh, you got a new president, so that's dope. But let's talk about Craig Wright. <laughs> Craig Wright. Why? Okay. Why do you want to talk about him? So he's a, he's, first, he doesn't deserve the attention. He's a worthless piece of shit. I understand that, Corey, but not everyone knows this dense history of Bitcoin like we do. And if they're just getting into the game, which I know they are because I do Google searches on people's Google searches, I want to help them understand part of the community. They're in this Bitcoin shit with us now. They just bought $5 of Bitcoin. They can't wait for it to turn into $5 million in the year 3,055, and they want to know what's up with Bitcoin. So we're going to help them. All right? Craig Wright's – the first thing you need to know about Craig Wright audience is he's a twat. <laughs> okay? The second, the second thing you need to know about him is he is fraudulently claiming that he's Satoshi Nakamoto. And he's been fraudulently claiming this for almost a decade, which at this point, I got to give him props for the staying power. Because that is commitment to a lie like I've never seen before. But anyways, so Craig Wright has been faking. And then there was, you know, great minds like Ryan X. Charles. If you don't know who Ryan X. Charles is, he was a, he was a developer. He's a Bitcoin developer way back in the day. Love Bitcoin. Uh, he's made some companies like yours. Um, you know, he's, uh, that's some big news that came across our news ticket right there. I don't know if you guys just saw that. But I'll get into that audience. But so essentially, Craig Wright has like been sued because he fraudulently claimed he's Satoshi Nakamoto and he lost that lawsuit. So now he owes a bunch of Bitcoin uh, to people. And um, I don't know. Long story short is if you're just getting into crypto and you see the name Craig Wright, don't worry. He's a twat. And uh, you don't need to really follow that story at all. There's more. There's better time you can spend your time. There's better places you can spend your time while you're in the rabbit hole. What I understand right, so is why that. Bitcoin Core. So he, like, okay? he, he basically claimed that he had patent over the bitcoin white paper and told bitcoin core bitcoin.org to shit to turn it down and which they scrambled to do and it's like why would you be like so such bitches in this when he threatens with something that he can't prove because he has to prove that he's satoshi in order to for that for that to actually work all right drive, drive people through the muck of of of, of, mm -hmm. law, of lawsuits but these people have been in bitcoin for forever like the bitcoin core developers have a bunch of Bitcoin. What are they worried about in terms of a lawsuit? <laughs> I don't get it. It's 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 absurd to me that someone would. It's all stupid. I, I don't even want to pay any more attention to it. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. If you see his name, nothing's gonna happen from it. He's gonna he's it's gonna fuckery. he's gonna drag a bunch of people through the yeah. mud and make things yeah. annoying, and then we'll move on again. Yeah, pure fuckery. Um, so that's that with Craig Wright. Nothing to you. So. Um, there's something else I wanted to talk about. Jesse, are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm just looking at your background. It looks nice and like, you know, cabin. Wood. Yeah. It's very woody. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I'm in a I'm I'm in a cabin, bro. In a cabin. I'm talking there's bears and shit all over the place out there. Like <laughs> there's your video, all over your video is like Yo, a bro, minute bro. ahead of your your audio. Been that way oh, for a while. Okay. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> but um, there's stickers all over the place. It's like, oh, there's bears out here. Don't be. Don't leave any fucking food around here. Or they're gonna snatch your toddlers. But like, it's for how's real. How's your kids? How's your wife? In these bear woods. Or you actually are in a cabin? Yeah, and there was a. There's a. Yeah, I'm in a cabin. You want me no, to walk around? Cool. Right? You want to see it? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Remember, oh, we're, being, we're recording yeah, video, so we're recording video, so don't be like going too much over oh, yeah? here. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, I'm not gonna go too far. This is a cabin. It's kind of dark out here, though. You can't see much. Where's that one? Oh yeah, he's a cabin, bro. Look, cabin. That's very cabin. Yeah. yeah. 
Sometimes you just gotta go to a fucking cavern. You know what I mean? But anyways, Dang. um, cool. So, so the thing is, ether. This is what I want to know from you, Corey. Ether is your thing, thing, right? I mean, I know stuff. Yeah. All right. So we've got all these billions and billions and billions of dollars locked up in this Ethereum 2.0 contract. Yeah. All right. So what happens from there? Like, when, like, wh- what happens from there? I'm still lost on the like, what's the next step? Because I was like, yo, like, shouldn't transaction in this like the step where transaction fees and gas fees go down because it's locked in the second layer and we can do all these transactions and like we could shard and we can like fucking really take over the planet. But then I was talking with our boy Andy, and he was like, no, nah, that shit's not going to be live until next year. And I was like, what shit's not live? There's money in the contract already. Let's do this shit. It's ether time. Like, I'm ready to cowabunga. Like, I'm fully lit. <laughs> but I understand I can't be that. I understand I can't be that amped yet. We've had this conversation multiple no, times. No, sorry. I wasn't talking to Andy. On the show. I know, I know, We've had but, this conversation you know, multiple times. All right. So, you know. Right, let me, let me go but, through. Hold up. This wasn't Andy. Sorry. This was Yagi. This was okay. Yagi, not Andy. Well, to reiterate again, uh, maybe those other people who are new who have not heard all the shows or even the past like four shows where I probably repeated this three times. Uh, F2 is not done. The first, the first phase, which is actually called phase zero, has been done on mainnet. And that's where all the money is going. And all that does is make the beacon chain work of, of phase two, which is just the coordination layer. It's the proof of stake and coordination layer, which tells all the validators who have stake what shard they will be coordinating on. So it's basically just making sure the base layer of F2 works appropriately. And people, and you make money on this just by, just by participating mm. and sending the messages and the testing blocks and all the stuff that you need to do at, at the, at the, base coordination layer of ethereum 2 you get paid in ethereum so people are just doing this they're just they're just locking their money up because they're basically going long on ethereum and then making money in the process of doing it because you need a computer that needs to be online for a long period of time like basically needs to be consistently online with a good internet connection that can participate in this like coordination layer where it's like all right, I'm, I'm checking these blocks. This is my so-and-so. And the people are like, yeah, I attest to that. That's good. And everyone who attests gets money. People who propose blocks gets money, so on and so forth. And so that's just going to keep going. And in order to do this, you put money in the Ethereum 2 uh, smart contract, which is on the Ethereum 1 blockchain. So essentially, you lock up your Ethereum 1 in this smart contract on, Ethereum, on, on, the, on the original Ethereum blockchain. And when you do that, it mints, it, it basically yeah. locks it. It's, it's there forever. It's not going anywhere. And then it mints it on the Ethereum 2 and you start participating. So it's a transfer from of Ether from one blockchain to another. Now, you can't do anything on Ethereum 2 yet because we don't have shards. We don't have execution. It's not so like phase 1.5, which is going to be potentially, a, I don't know how long from now. Maybe, maybe, maybe this year where we start actually putting storage on shards, which means there's no execution. You can't like run smart contracts, you can't process transactions. All you can do is put storage on the shards. And then what happens is from there, Mm -hmm. the layer twos, like all the roll-up implementations, can take take advantage of that storage and put all of their transactional storage on the shards of Ethereum 2. So then you start actually, then you'll start seeing a drastic reduction in in gas prices because layer twos are operating appropriately and they're able to scale really fast and do the number of transactions associated with the demand of decentralized finance right now or DeFi. But nothing's going to happen until then. All we're doing is locking up either. That's it. And still just like ramming Ethereum 1 with a bunch of transactions that it can't handle. Woo. Mm. <laughs> so that's what's happening, right? Like, like the, the DeFi space so... is blowing up. But we're, we have limited space on the Ethereum 1 blockchain to process all the transactions that DeFi wants to do. So the prices are going to go up. You can't do anything else. Until we have layer two, which is mm. optimism, which is an optimistic roll-up implementation, is very close. But it's only—I mean, there's, it remains to be seen whether or not uh, that does the trick of 
lowering lowering transaction fees as everyone migrates to the layer two. So what happens next, though? What happens next? I'm just fucking with, with you at with, this point. With what? I'm just, okay. I'm just, because there's a lot of things <laughs> that happen <laughs> next. Like, you know, I mean, I was just, that, what's, I was just okay. <laughs> I can, I can, it's, it's a I'm whole joking, clusterfuck. Really. It's so much stuff. Okay. Damn. So what does happen next? Okay. So <laughs> what happens next is, what happens next is everyone migrates to layer twos that get released. <laughs> well, well, Ethereum two continues to be developed. Okay. So when's that, that going to happen? Uh, so what he's saying is this show is, what Corey's trying to say is this show is brought to you by Avalanche. Hmm. Um, it's a block. No, I'm kidding. We have a is whole, still? I think we're here. done. I think we're it's done with dope. them, aren't we? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I feel like throwing them a shout out. You know, they're a good company. They're well, doing I love Avalanche. It's great. <laughs> you know? I love it. Avalanche is great, dude. Well Price is skyrocketing. Price, during this price, is, great. <laughs> price, price is great. Price is great. <laughs> great. But uh, yeah. also, I like. I mean, we, we they're a sponsor for I'm a reason because we sad. like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not. A, you know, we like them. It's not just because we're paid by them. I mean, we like them because we genuinely like them. If you ever, um, someone ever made that claim, you know, they can go to hell because I've been, I've been talking about them, having interviews with them for probably over a year before they actually gave us a sponsorship. Damn, Corey, you're so fire and brimstone. You could go to hell. You, you, go, go, you go right to hell. No. You go, you go there. You stay there. Um, so um, that's all I want to talk about before the interview. We can cut to the interview now. Jesse, I'll let you bring on in this uh, this interview. E. All right. Wait, who who's our interview for today? It's in the notes on the right. I was hoping you wouldn't say that. I was hoping. You would say that. <laughs> I was. Ho- well, I was we haven't done this. Like, a, as of this recording, we want to get in the weeds and the secret sauce of how we make this show. Uh, it's really technical. We haven't done the interview yet. It's happening tomorrow. So, <laughs> uh, and this will come out after that. And so it's episode 336. We got Peter Jersik from Metagame. Whoever's watching the stream has seen that on the right this entire time because I have the chat. Uh, so oh, yeah, it's true. Let's go to let's go you talk about Metagame. Pro- I don't care. This that's why we're having producing fun. Producing a show. No, we're not. We're talking yeah. to each other and then and then broadcasting it. That's we all we're doing. We're being authentic. D. Yeah. Uh, audience, they're totally joking. We so, we interviewed We're so good at faking authenticity that D is ruining it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, don't listen to Corey and Jesse. We totally did this interview. It was way professional. We used microphones that were good. Like, in here it is. Hello, everyone. This is Alicia, the producer. I am here to introduce our guest, Petra of Metagames, with our host, Jesse, the Broke Man. Uh, to talk about uh, this new way to think about building a community within uh, the Etho, uh, Ethereum ecosystem. And I'll leave it, take it to you, Jesse. All right. So, Pet Theft, talk to me. Tell me about who you are and what you do. And how you came into the space, by the way. Yes, you want to, you want to start with the, the, the background? Like how yeah, you... sure actually have a bit of an unusual background um, I, I used to be a plumber and like a gas pipes engineer so like central heating systems and uh-huh. <laughs> that kind of work but yeah I was always uh, interested in like uh, alternative economic systems and like the Zeitgeist trilogy used to be like my favorite documentaries and, like the Venus project researching all kinds of like uh, off the grid villages resource based economy and I don't know you know all kinds of different uh, basically alternative economic systems interesting okay uh, yeah and then i found ethereum it's like oh damn this is like this is the the software layer like this is how to make any sort of economic system like, actually possible in a decentralized yeah. way and it all kind of clicked into place and, yeah. uh, interesting. Okay. okay so i got into ethereum and yeah i never left ethereum i just <laughs> went deep on it and that's what I've been. Okay. So how do you feel about Ethereum? Let me ask you about that. How do I feel about it? Yeah. So like ETH 2.0 versus like ETH right now, you know, all the gas fees, everything that the good and the bad. Yeah. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the gas is, it's not fun. It's not fun paying these uh, high gas prices. Yeah. 
yeah, like with most use cases, it's like getting around these like uh, layer two solutions, so like XDAI and things like that. Yep. Yeah. Main, mainnet is becoming unusable for anything that's not uh, DeFi, basically. Yep. Yep. So, so how how does? I feel like that would that would kind of poke a hole in, in your your idea that you know we could use Ethereum as like the software for building out you know lots of you know financial backend infrastructure for you know this you know independent uh, futuristic society community whatever you know mm-hmm. wouldn't that poke holes like if, if transaction fees of like essentially your ability to to move your money around is a little bit yeah. you know, inhibited. Yeah, it's kind of messed up, and our uh, seed market is also on, on mainnet currently, and it's yeah, it's really expensive. But yeah, the hope is that uh, by the time that we are finished building the, these the economic primitives in Meta game, then mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully by then Ethereum will be able to scale. If not uh, through like uh, 2.0 stuff, then at least through other like uh, less centralized uh, layer two tech. Mm. Okay. So tell me a little bit about Meta game. Like, what what is that? I I have no idea. Right, so I'll go, I'll go a bit back as well for this. Okay. So in the first summer of the, the bear winter, the bear winter of 2017 until 2020. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was basically not doing anything. I got, yeah, I, I just uh, stopped paying attention to crypto after everything started crashing. Absolutely. That's what everybody does. Don't look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just took a step back and chilled out for a bit and then after a while i found uh, an article written by this dude called peter pan who started the meta cartel dao okay. and he he wrote a post saying basically how yeah we need to get our shit together and start start building more applications that we actually used on ethereum and how ethereum is about to lose its like a uh, first move advantage because yeah all these all of these ethereum killers are coming in and uh, some of them even have like better onboarding systems. Mm-hmm. And yeah, how how yeah if we don't if we don't get serious about uh, building applications, then it's all ruined. Mm-hmm. And that uh, yeah that uh, vibe with me, so I just contacted him. And then I went out to meet him. He was coming to Ljubljana to a uh, year of the Dow meetup, mm-hmm. and uh, I went there to meet him, which was like less than a two-hour drive from my place. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he he onboarded me to the Meta Cartel. I really love the idea. So a little background on the Meta Cartel as well. They came together, basically trying to solve the issue that they all had because most of the founders had some kind of applications. And mm-hmm. the big big uh, user experience problem is that uh, people need to have at least some ether to use any application. Mm-hmm. So they came together and built. Uh, project called the gas station network which yeah, allowed the meta transactions so for the applications to subsidize the the usage of their application for the users mm, okay um, but yeah but they decided to up, they built that then they decided okay so why don't we do more more good things for the ecosystem and then just they started pulling together ether and just uh, giving grants to people who are building applications you know i uh, i joined the meta cartel like few months ago because i was like yeah this looks pretty cool and i i it's very hard to get a hold of ed- anybody like the- <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good point but yeah so <laughs> i joined and i was like wait is this an organization this is a telegram chat where, yeah where yeah exactly i like, see the telegram i was like where the hell is everybody like i see i don't know everybody's asking like how do i how do i get involved in the telegram and nobody's responding yeah, and uh, but you, you joined the like the ecosystem chat or the actual DAO. Um, I believe I didn't join the DAO. I joined the okay. ecosystem chat. I, I would I would assume. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty confusing as well. Like uh, we are, we are trying to move everything over to Discord because yeah we have that makes more sense. Many Telegram chats. Yeah. 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 Okay. So basically, yeah, I joined the DAO and I was like, okay, first I joined the ecosystem chat. Like, okay, this is a chat. And yeah. Then I joined the DAO. And Wait, is this just another Telegram chat? Like, <laughs> where is the organization? Yeah. And so I started to, you know, figuring out like what kind of structure you have, like uh-huh. some kind of a system to help people understand, like what are the projects going on, like who are the people, who is working on what. And, so how did you, you know, find that out? Because I still couldn't find that out. Just through talking to people mainly. 
<laughs> yeah, a lot of rappers. But it's yeah. like they're trying to make UI experience better, but in their own internal UI, I'm like, oh, I'm horny. It's like shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I tried. I started writing this uh, paper that I called the uh, Meta Cartel Black Paper, which was uh-huh. all about like uh, building a structure where people can, where it would be ma- made easier to like for people to for coming in to find out like yeah what's going on, what can they do, and yeah, all of that. And then I was uh, working out through this paper. I wrote the paper, and I started to to talk to all the Meta Cartel people. Mm-hmm. I went to Eat Berlin and Depcon and talked to a bunch more people there. Mm-hmm. And like the the more I thought about it, and the more I wrote about it, and like actually the first time I, I wrote about it, like I wrote this, started writing this paper, mm-hmm. and so I just sent it to Peter, and he's like, "Oh, nice! Here's six hundred dollars." Okay, like I didn't expect this. This is nice. <laughs> Wait, Peter, Peter who? Peter, Peter, Peter Pan. Oh, Peter Pan. <laughs> that's not his real name, right? That's like a pseudonym. I actually think that's his real name. Peter Pan. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, he is his actual name. Uh, yeah, he got some uh, money from Binance for like a fellowship, and he just okay. I'm just going to spray this money to all the people who are like creating value in the mm-hmm. metaverse. He just gave it to me like some. Yeah. Okay, awesome. But yeah, then I like the more I wrote about it and thought about it, the more I'm like okay, if we are going to build this whole system, then it doesn't make sense to build. It just for the meta cartel we should make it so that other DAOs can join and mm-hmm. uh, yeah not just for this one DAO mm-hmm. and this is yeah around the time that uh, around the Eat Berlin and then after Eat Berlin uh, had this idea that okay this should be called a meta game mm-hmm. like the the genre would be like uh, called a massive online coordination game we, we had this trip uh, after after this week of conferences like 30 people going around uh, hiking and mm-hmm. we had a lot of coordination problems <laughs> and uh, just the, the whole day this was like the main topic like coordination problems not just uh, in meta cartel but like society at large and uh-huh. like ethereum ecosystem and crypto you know, called cryptosphere and all that mm-hmm. and like coordination 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 and then by the end of the day we're like okay it's a massive online coordination game that's what it is so and yeah, in the beginning, I used to explain it to people that was like, okay, so you take like a freelancing platform, you take social media, and you take World of Warcraft, and you just smash it all into one. Okay. <laughs> so like a real life MMORPG. Yeah. And they decided to call it the meta game. And so yeah, it still depends on like who asks me. So sometimes I just say it's like yeah, just like a real life MMORPG. Yeah. Like if a, if a freelancer asks me, then it's like. Yeah, it's like a user-owned uh, freelancing platform. Sure. Okay. If it's like a political philosopher asks me, then it's like an anarcho-syndicalist wet <laughs> <laughs> you, you, yeah. you tailor the definition to what they know best. <laughs> that what might entice them to join. Yeah, exactly. I got you. So, so how is this? So this is increasing the other DAOs to join meta cartel dow not really so okay. the meta cartel so like the three main uh, like types of participants in the meta game would be like a player which is mm-hmm. a, like a human being mm-hmm. and then there are guilds which are like uh, groups of people that are like either working on a project or offering a service so they can mm-hmm. be like a project guild or they can be a service guild or they can be like a funding guild okay different, like a media guild lots of different types of guilds and then there are alliances, which are just groups of guilds. And yeah, so Meta Cartel is an alliance because Meta Cartel already has like 20, 30 projects that are like members of the Meta Cartel, mm-hmm. a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. So they are considered an alliance. And we only have, yeah, so we have three alliances. So one of them is Meta Cartel. Uh, one of them is like us, Metapan, which is yeah, also a DAO of its own. Mm-hmm. And we have the the Bloom Network, which is sort of like meta game in a way, but they are like focused on like real world problems. They are not in crypto. They are like they are here to use peop- uh, like the tools that we are building in crypto, mm-hmm. but they are like a like a grassroots network, like uh, solving hunger in that country and doing other, oh, okay. in other countries. Yeah, it's a good project. 
And then met in metagame itself, so like MetaFam is comprised of four teams. There was like a, a bunch more that we wanted to join, but we wanted to limit it for now. So mm -hmm. it's one to four teams. Okay, so 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 step one is like organization. So is step two like you know working on pushing productivity, like uh, efficacy of guilds. Yeah, just like if we're starting a project in crypto, it can be like really confusing. Like, a lot of the people joining don't, don't even know like uh, what kind of tools and frameworks they could be using to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, then they have a problem uh, getting funding and other kinds of problems. So we're trying to build this, this basically one stop where people can just come in and they can find any, uh, any kind of resource that they need to, for building a project, any kind of information or like inmates. Or, yeah, basically anything that they oh, need. Man, that sounds cool. I want to join that. Now we're just... <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> And uh, like, or now we are mainly focusing on like serving uh, like individual humans. So like mm -hmm. people who are just joining the space, basically trying to like explain to them like what's the significance of this technology, like why are we here, mm -hmm. things like that, and trying to yeah, inform them on what are like uh, decentralized organizations, and what are, how how to build decentralized applications, what kind of uh, DAOs can they join, mm -hmm. basically building like an onboarding machine. Yeah. Okay. I, I. So there. There's been a. There's actually a few different groups in this space that are doing the same thing, but not you know MMO RPG theme. But they're all underlying. The the underlying goal of all of these groups is essentially the same, which is you know base level organization and, um, in some cases incentivization. They actually layer, um, organization with incentivization and some sort of like um, lockup schemes. So I mean, you guys have DAOs. That's great. Um, but it just seems like, like I don't know if if that's the first, this the natural first step. Um, do do you, you ever like think about like specific projects besides just like the structure of setting up something to tackle projects in the future? Like specific projects for meta game or like in general? Yeah, in general, because like everybody is like. I feel like nobody knows a good idea to develop. I don't know, like they do, but like they're all information based because that's all that's it, that's flowing, right? It's like you, the blockchains are transparent for like every project for, for the most part. And so like everybody's like harvesting data at this point and they're creating these organizational structures. They're creating these DAOs also to invest essentially. They're hold funds differently, right? To make decisions as, as a group. Now, I, what happened to like developing specific dApps to solve specific problems? Is that like, like things, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, things that are needed? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, people who are joining and who know, like they have the skills and they want to start trying them out. Yeah, and they don't really know what's needed, so like they build like a uh, hundred uh, trading card card trading. Games. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like there, there's so many of them. Okay. Yeah. You know what yeah, I, mean. I think that's yeah, that's absolutely like a problem that needs to be solved. So like creating an information layer between the people who have been in the space for a long time and who know like what are the pain points and what are like the areas to explore and like what yeah. kind of application people should be experimenting with, and yeah, sharing that information with uh, people who are just joining and like trying looking for ideas on what to build. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's definitely something to, something we should do. Because like you know, DeFi is going crazy. Like once you I feel like everybody who ends up in crypto is either from like a I, idealistic standpoint where like they learn enough about money that they're like, hmm, I don't really like money, like money in terms of fiat, right? There's a better way to do this, right? So they'll come at it from that way or they'll be like, you know, like, oh, huge, insane gains. I like crypto now or like, I don't know, like you name some. Like uh, different kinds of use cases, or what well, the, the way the ways that people come into crypto, and I guess like the way that DeFi, like DeFi is just like exploding because everybody's like super hungry for money. So like, yeah, I feel yeah. I feel like the the center of DeFi is just yeah. like greed, right? Pure greed. Right. Yeah. I think the other main uh, direction that people are coming from lately is the NFTs. So like the the whole uh, art space has been blowing up. I actually That's found that uh, to me. 
Yeah, I, I've seen <laughs> an article about a gallery in crypto voxels in like the local newspaper, and I'm from a really small town of like, of, like 50,000 people. I was like, what? What? <laughs> so oh, wow. I immediately contacted the person who like who, who the article was about. Yeah. And I went out to meet him, and it turned out that he didn't even he wasn't even in crypto like before. He just uh, he was uh, trying to yeah he make his art digital. And yeah. someone found out about the NFTs, and then he got he dived into crypto like to the the crypto art space. And I think like more and more people are coming from that direction, like the musicians who are like sick of iTunes and then like, like joining through audio like what, what is it called the, not audible but like. Oh, that the, the application that's uh, basically like something between an iTunes and uh, SoundCloud, SoundCloud, but it's user owned. Hmm. Uh, Audius, Audius, right? Audius, okay. Never heard of that one. That's new to me. Yeah, so that and like yeah, the so the all the, all the NFT trading mm. uh, places and like crypto boxes for the artists to make their galleries. Yeah, and those are those are seeing some good action. Yeah, I, that's. That seems to me like to at least be, I don't know, less about pure greed, which I kind of like, mm. more wholesome, you know? Like, I went to the Crypto Voxel Gallery, like, I was just walking around, you know, just checking it out, you know? It looks pretty cool, you know? I saw a lot of dicks everywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, 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 it was all good. Um uh, I don't know. What, do you do you want to talk to anything in particular? About anything? Yeah. You seem like you you take a lot of initiative to like go places physically, like go to things. For me, like I I just uh, I just talk to people online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's mostly been like that for me too this year. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, COVID. <laughs> yeah, and I, I started a podcast as well. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay. So how how has that been? We're on like our 10th episode, I think. Yeah. We just published the 10th episode last week. Nice. I actually started uh, three podcasts. <laughs> we started yeah. podcasts. <laughs> so we started the first podcast, podcast, which is called the MetaView podcast, which uh-huh. is like the MetaGames podcast. Yeah. And then I saw this dude shared an idea of like, what, like, what if somebody made a podcast that was like, you interview someone, and then that someone interviews the next person, and then <laughs> the next person interviews the next person. Yeah, yeah. Sort of roles like that. And I decided to like take it a step further, and yeah. I actually I interviewed the uh, Magenta from the Bloom Network because yeah, the project is somewhat similar to MetaGame. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, so let's talk, and then you go record uh, like some. Like, uh, so the idea was that we are going to start two, two podcasts from one Genesis episode. Uh-huh. Then the podcast will be called like the autonomous A and the autonomous B. Uh-huh. And so the, the autonomous A would be about like uh, solving world's problems with technology, and uh-huh. the autonomous B would be about uh, solving the problems through like uh, grassroots organizations. And so it's been spreading. And what what's, what was funny actually is that like my first uh, I went on after the rec- recording the podcast with her. I went on to interview Vinay Gupta, and then she went on to interview Nelson Malina. Uh-huh. And Nelson Molina and Vinay Gupta were neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny little coincidence. So, so, so it's like a, it's a lot about information. It seems like like you're you're taking in information, you're spreading information about crypto and and the organizational structures behind it. Um, yeah. Yeah, trying to build. Yeah, because the information, like most of it, already exists. It's just not in the right space. Like people are like, okay, so I want to join crypto. Like, where do I go? And like, um, here's this YouTube video. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, go to this subreddit. Yeah. It's like there's no like one space that like can send you to all the different directions that you might want to explore, or like explaining it in a way that you will find like. Okay, so what is the blockchain? Mm, so there are miners, so it's like nobody cares. Like they want to know what are the use case. Like if he's a musician, he wants to know about a platform that won't rip him off. That's true. Yeah, the yeah, the explanation should be like based on people's backgrounds. 
Hmm. I saw okay. a list somewhere. If you Google like open source DAP projects, like there's a list mm -hmm. and it tells you the name of the project and it tells you like in parentheses, like what it's for. Right. Yeah. Maybe like, is that, is that somehow like useful to like, I don't know. I think so. Like uh, a few years back, there was this website that was called uh, "What the fuck is Ethereum?" And then yeah. you opened it; it had like a basic explanation, and then it had like a drop-down list. And like you click the drop-down and said, "Okay, explain it to me like M5. Explain it to me as uh, if I want to make get rich. Explain it to yeah. me like as I'm a musician. Explain it to me like different, like different uh, kinds of explanations. I think something like that is definitely needed, and we will be building that sort of like an onboarding bot that like takes people to yeah, the directions that they want to explore it from because yeah just you can't just explain it in the same way to everyone because it just doesn't click that's true you know i actually forget about that because uh, for me um my background is also engineering so like i with the parts that i couldn't understand um i just asked around and like you know eventually i asked enough people and i could piece together enough of you know how essentially bitcoin works um like i you know doing the hashes like doing the the sha 256 hash by hand on on like this paper of like the mm -hmm. nonce that belongs to the uh block the next block header like like and making it click like that and like understanding the randomness that comes from you know like using um ecdsa stuff right. so it's like but like i guess you're right like i don't think about it like a musician doesn't care about that yeah, you just don't even understand. <laughs> it. Like you, you're an engineer, so you like you had a context that you can place it in. Yeah, like a musician, you start talking to them to them about the hashes, and you're like, they just zone out. <laughs> How do I make music? Make music, fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I I get it. Yeah, hmm. I don't. Yeah, that's good. That's that's good that you you think of that. Mm. I just I, I'm just like <laughs> I'm too deep. I'm too deep sometimes. <laughs> so they're like Merkle trees. <laughs> you know what? I okay. So I don't think of myself as a nerd, right? But I just realized I might be a nerd, and <laughs> this is why. Let me explain. So, I a friend was asking me about keyboards, right? Recently, hmm. um, in fact, it was Corey. Corey was asking me about keyboards. He was like, "Hey, how do I get a silent click out of my keyboard?" And I told him, "Hey." What kind of click do you want? Do you want a thick click, or do you want like a like a like a thack? Like there's thick thack and like fuck, you know? Like there are different <laughs> sounds that your clack of the key can make. Which do you want? Like do you want tactile <laughs> feedback? Like and then I and then he was like, yeah, I don't care about that, dude. Like I just want like like I don't want to pay a lot. And I was like, oh fuck, because like I was explaining to him like, holy pandas xylent switches tangerines like alpacas and he was like what what are you talking about like he, like nobody <laughs> nobody even cares, you know and i was just like man right. i see i see where i am now okay right yeah yeah and mo most people don't care about like in so much detail like they want something that works and like they, like not nobody's going to i mean nobody like people like us go into it like detail researching what they're buying. Like, but most yeah. people just want just want a recommendation for something that is good. And don't care about like, okay, but if you want to tailor it like really specifically to your needs, and, like yeah. you get that like this hundred percent out of it, then you have to like yeah. Gotta go really enthusiast go level. And, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm learning a lot about life from this conversation. <laughs> My recommendations are shit. I need, I need to like just hey, just get those uh razor switches or uh, I don't know, MX Cherry MX silent reds. Call it right. a day. You don't have to lube and film your switches. <laughs> All right. right. Uh. Well, what 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 else do you want to talk about? I feel like do you want to talk more about metagame or we can go like back to the like the problem of use cases. I think like yeah. the reason we haven't like started tackling that because is mainly because we're focusing on like individuals. So like uh, helping them find existing uh, projects for that are building things. So like uh, they're like uh, one high or Raid Guild, mm. which are projects somewhat similar to Meta Game that are 
building uh, things for other projects as well, but uh, mainly, I mean, one has mainly building for themselves. So like, if you want to build something, you should probably start helping other people build their thing first. Like that's how okay. you get experience. Yeah. And then that's like that's how we will meet people and see the pain points and go on from there. So they're like, there's a chronic lack of competent builders in the space. Yeah. Um, okay. You want to talk about that, like specifically? I don't think there's much more to say. Like, just yeah, just sending people in the right direction, so like they they can come into Meta Game and then they see okay, maybe I can stay here because Meta Game has a bunch of projects that we are working on. Yeah. And then if they don't see anything interesting, then they go like to another DAO and just join there and find something to work there. Uh, yeah. And yeah, in Metagame, we're trying to make it so that we're, first of all, we're spreading in all kinds of directions. So we have the podcasts, we have some, pe some people making videos and like a lot of memes. So we're trying to make it so that it's not just about uh, building. And that's a general like uh, misconception that people have like, Okay, I want to join the space, but I'm not a developer, so I'm not useful. Like that's like really far from true. Like there's so many things that you could be doing, yeah. and that's one of the things that we're trying to explain to people and like really lower the the contribution bar. So like, there's always some things that in metagame that can be done, but like by like literally anyone who doesn't even have any skills whatsoever. Like there's always something that you can do and earn some, a bit from it. So like even even uh, for example when we record a the podcast, then uh, yeah. somebody needs to find a clip from the podcast that's like the most interesting uh, uh, two minutes of the podcast. And then mm -hmm. I just post the podcast and then so, like uh, with a question, okay, so listen to the podcast and find the part that's most interesting. And then if we make a video from that part, then you get some tokens. Okay. So I guess yeah, we can get into the system like how how metagame works. Yeah, let's do that. I think that would be interesting. So, like the the way the DAOs currently work, at least uh, like ninety nine percent of them, is through having like a central treasury and voting on proposals. So, like whatever you want to do or get some money, like you have to uh, submit a proposal, then people have to vote, and then you get the money. Mm -hmm. And that's not really like. First of all, a lot of DAOs end up pretty centralized because the voting power is based on money. And mm -hmm. so you don't like instead of having the people on the front lines making decisions, it's all like still it's kind of still top down. It's just technologically decentralized. Yeah. Uh, but it's like still like it's not really it's not made for like moving fast. Like if you want to build like a startup, then you need to, people to be able to like build things and get paid easier. Like not having to make proposals for everything and then get make more proposals to get paid and it just slows things down like yeah, most of the DAO frameworks like what they're useful for is like for grant giving organizations or like investment vehicles but it's not they weren't like actually made for doing things yeah yeah and i can see so that what we, and yeah and what we're doing differently is we are using this project called the uh, source cred which mm -hmm. is you hook it up to github you hook it up to the forums and the discord and it basically tracks everything that's going on so mm -hmm. like uh, on discord it's based on like uh, people give reactions to your message and then on that you get uh, like uh, these xp points mm -hmm. on github it depends on like uh, when you build something so people build on top of it that means that what you built was useful mm. okay and so it's like it's like yeah. steam it except for GitHub, so, and, and, like, something like that, right? So, yeah. like, you make more yeah, commits, in a way. activity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like Steam, but it's not about content, but, yeah, you just right. hook it up, and it tracks everything that's going on inside a community. Interesting. So like, you don't, you don't have to start a post about it, you just write a message in Discord. And so, yeah. so you can really go, go super granular on how you define the weights, so, like, you can have one channel that's, like, super high weight, yeah. And then you have like a tavern chat, which is like you can get a lot of uh, reactions there, but it's not worth much. And so you connect uh, GitHub to Discord, is that what you said? Source cred? Yes, yeah, source connect uh, hooks into all the platforms that we're using. Right now, they, it, it can only connect to uh, GitHub, uh, Discord, and Discourse. But yeah, whoever wants to build another plugin, they can just build another plugin to connect it to other uh, other platforms. 
Yeah. Maybe cool. Yeah, it's open source. This is great. And it's actually a really cool project. Like it's it was made by like it's, it was made by a non crypto guy. I mean he's 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 into crypto now. Yeah. <laughs> he's not a guy, at least not how they want to get referred to as so it's they them. Oh gotcha. Yeah. And so yeah, apologies if you're listening to this then the line. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they started a project so like uh, to help uh, open source project get uh, funding, I guess, like uh, help check who contributed to what, and then have it, have a more efficient way for uh, distributing funds. So like instead of having uh, some people get like sponsorship, yeah, like the whole project get the sponsorship, and then it get dispersed based on the cred that's uh, that's gained that's tracked through the system. And they were working at uh, Google actually wh- when they came up with this idea. Interesting. And, and Torchic actually is based on uh, on uh, what is it called? Hold on, what is the word? Page rank algorithm. So like uh, that's what allows people like uh, to make it harder to game the system. So like you can't just uh, f- have a friend and you just like upload each other's work and you create infinite money. Okay. So the, the weight is also based on like uh, how much the person giving the credit has. Yeah. And how much uh, different like initiatives are worth. What is what? Is, what was the word you said? Was it paging? Page rank. Page yeah, rank. That's what, you, that's what Google uses to rank the websites. So like. Okay. You know how the the there there used to be this really shitty website that you just like uh, backlink to a b- bunch of other websites and that. Mm-hmm. That that was used to like boost pages in the Google search. I didn't know that. Google, yeah, then, then Google added this like page rank, which made it so that like a uh, high high value website create more reputation for lower weight, but uh, like useless websites don't create any any reputation for like other websites. Yeah, it sounds like um, there's that one project. Um, let me find it. Bright ID. They use a similar system, right? for mm. verification and also uh, credibility. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Bright should... ID is a cool project. Huh? Bright ID is a cool project. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, their, their founder, is, uh, Philip, is uh, also a player in Metagame. So we're oh, probably okay. going to be integrating it into the MyMeta profiles, which I guess I should also touch upon in a bit. But yeah, let's uh, get the, back to the system. Yeah, yeah. So we have the the source cred, which is used to track what's going on in these platforms, mm-hmm. and then like uh, whatever gets. Uh, so we have this uh, channel that's called data thing. So that's for like posting uh, higher, bigger chunks of work that's not uh, like properly tracked to through these uh, platforms. Like whatever is in GitHub that gets like rewarded properly, but whatever is like outside of these platforms, like it's it's impossible to track. So we have this channel. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Like. Uh, other things are rewarded and then like if it still misses some things that they, they can be manually added and uh, so we have that the right source of this the first uh, big big part so like the first 30 percent i guess of this whole system and then we have the aragon dao but i mean in that place you can put any sort of other uh, like token minting mechanism mm. so we yeah so you mint tokens through aragon or whatever other way and then we use a balancer to then we use the balancer to start the seed market so to make the to make our tokens liquid. Interesting. Because for the first year, it was just yeah people were getting the tokens but nobody was able to sell them. So then we we finished the system with by implementing this final piece which is the seed market, and it's it's been going pretty good actually. People have been adding liquidity. We have something like almost half a million dollars in liquidity and the mm-hmm. token itself like the market cap is just a bit over a million so that's like that's awesome. a big chunk that's a big chunk in the liquidity mm-hmm. yeah i mean like a thousand dollars still moves the price by 0.7 percent which is not ideal but yeah considering the market cap of the project as a whole is so tiny mm-hmm. then that's actually not bad yeah and yeah we we've like we composed this system, which is like a source cred, Aragon, and balancer, and we call this the Metasys. And yeah, I think a lot of the DAOs will be using this to build uh, projects this year. 
like we were the first to actually use SourceThread besides the source team itself. Yeah, we were the first to mint tokens based on cred because uh, yeah they were not doing that. Also the first to like uh, to use the Discord plugin and the first to yeah to use all of that to mint the token and make it tradable. And uh, I think that's this whole system like these three components really will allow a lot of cool projects to like to yeah to start as DAOs instead of like uh, centralized startups. Yeah, so I think they, they should be really something to look for in uh, 2021. I think a lot of projects will be using uh, like a variation on, on this system. Now, what you were talking about earlier, just to touch up on that, you said DAO is essentially slow, fast progress, fast moving small groups, right? Right, right. So um, if, if somebody has a new project, like let's say mm -hmm. I have a new project idea and um, wouldn't I be inhibited by the the DAO structure? Yeah, like if it's an original DAO, like if you was just use the Aragon and use voting to do things, then yes. But if yeah. you're using a, this system that we are using with SourceThread, mm -hmm. it's like you don't really like it's all permissionless. So you can just come in, do things and get rewarded. Like if you do something good, you just get yeah. paid. You don't have to like submit a proposal to do something. You don't have to submit a proposal to get paid. You just do it, and if it's like valuable, then you get paid. Like it's really, it makes it super simple. How do you guys? How do you guys like? Is somebody auditing? Like, let's say somebody like uh, does uh, like code code related upgrades to a project. Mm -hmm. is, is there somebody like who's automatically like their like their job is to like audit the changes that are being pushed? I mean, we have people who review uh, pull requests on yeah. On GitHub, we I don't think anybody did, did like an actual audit. Okay. But yeah, I mean PRs get reviewed. But mm -hmm. so far we haven't built anything that's like that actually needs a review. So we haven't built any of the on-chain stuff. Like whatever yeah. we are using on Ethereum is what already exists pretty much. And this is so this is only for Ethereum. So like if I if I wanted to build on a different um, network, but I still wanted to use the same or like, I guess, same infrastructure. I couldn't, right? I mean, well, SourceThread is completely agnostic to, like, what kind of blockchain you want to use since, like, it doesn't even need uh, a blockchain. Yeah. And then, like, whatever other chain that you want to use, it just needs to have the ability to mint tokens and in some kind of, like, automated uh, market-making uh, application. Uh huh. So, so like, like, so like balancer, you can use the balancer, balancer. You can use balancer, Uniswap, like uh, Sushi Swap, whatever you want. To. Like we are using balancer because it allows us to set uh, different. Uh, it allows us to change the the ratio of the tokens inside the pool, yeah. and it allows us to control the pool through the through the DAO. But like, yeah, you can use whatever other automated money maker. I mean, you don't even have to use an automated money make, money market maker. You can just use a like a normal dex if you want to but yeah yeah hmm. yeah it's not it's not it's not tied to ethereum no okay so so beyond the system of how uh, how you guys have incorporated using source thread how you guys have um, incorporated using um basically token generation and liquidity um mm -hmm. creation what other what other aspects of metagame are kind of unique to what you guys are doing or that maybe you want to talk about yeah, so I think yeah, the, the idea of spreading, like doing all, all kinds of things differently. So yeah, the, the podcast, we did, uh, we also organized the first uh, virtual conference back when the corona just started. Uh -huh. We organized a hackathon. Yeah, no, a, a bunch of other things that we did, but yeah, it was all, all uh, tracked through social and rewarded with this system. Yeah. And then on the technical side of the project, we were the first uh, project that we started building was were the my meta profiles. Uh -huh. So these are like let me share my screen if you want to see it. Sure. sure. This is like the design. So okay. the idea was that uh, yeah, you have this uh, one profile that uh, should be like uh, super modular, so that people yeah. can change the wallpaper, can change the color scheme. And then it has, uh, like, it has uh, your skills. It has, like, different uh, links to your other social media. Yeah. 
yeah. it has uh, like a list of uh, DAOs that you are a member of. Yeah. It has like the NFT gallery. You can pin the posts and uh, do whatever you want. It's like MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a decentralized uh, LinkedIn page. Okay. Uh, yeah. We yeah. just, we just uh, hope that uh, we won't end up as MySpace. Like when I was calling it my meta, I was actually thinking about MySpace. And, like, it's fine. Like maybe we will end up like MySpace, but yeah, it's needed right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so that's the like the the basic profile. That's and pretty cool. Yeah, so we have also this uh, like uh, trust button, which is sort of like uh, add as friend, but instead of just like a normal add as friend, it should be like with skin in the game. So like you either uh, exchange some personal tokens, or if you don't have personal tokens, then you stake for each other. Yeah. And then the collab is supposed to open a dialogue, which uh, like. Uh, is like starting a contract with the player so you can set like an escrow and ask the player to do something for you that's and pretty the idea is that, yeah, and the idea is like we're not building it for ourselves so like uh, we need it and we are, we are building it for ourselves but the idea is that uh, other organizations can also use it for their own uh, member directories yeah so that's the idea and this is like it's it's super basic but, uh, but yeah, you can see you get the point yeah so one thing like i i i struggle with is like um it's probably because i haven't gone deep enough in a while um because like i guess yeah for me for me like being a degenerate trader and learning about the space <laughs> was, was was yielding me enough but uh i feel like yeah like going deeper nft stuff like how how to aggregate all the nfts you own and being able to like interact with them usefully seems like mm -hmm. the next logical step um and i know that there's like different marketplace like what's that nft marketplace um like the big one open c open c there it is yeah um but maybe something else could be done versus just like a bazaar of nfts look at all here <laughs> This is uh, using OpenSea's uh, API, actually. I see. But there's yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with uh, with the NFTs. So we have this project called the Achievement Factory. Yeah. Which the idea was that uh, we wanted to start uh, minting these uh, achievement NFTs for MetaGame. Yeah. And then the Raid Guild also wanted to start doing that, and we're like, okay, so why don't we start a project that's like specifically for this? Yeah. So instead of like having a service inside MetaGame. We started a DAO that's like a DAO of its own that's specifically made for like uh, minting achievement NFTs for other DAOs. And so right now I think it's where is it? Let's see. It's six hundred DAOs. So there is a, a DAO house, Raid Guild, Metagame, Maki X, Meta Cafel, One Hive, Deep Four Whale, and Lex DAO. Yeah. And they are they are trying really cool things with NFTs. So like. Uh, NFTs that allow you to like have a custom theme for the website and I don't know all kinds of uh, <laughs> crazy experiments with uh, the NFTs. Yeah. I know that uh, DeFi projects are starting to like issue NFTs that somehow do DeFi things, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Or where that's I don't know. There's just so much going on in this space. I don't I don't know how you keep yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I I don't even think I do like keep up. I I have a vague idea of what's going on, but yeah, it's, I don't think it's at this point it's even possible to like stay on top of things. Yeah. Oh, this is all pretty cool. Achievement, achievement, die. See, but like what like like say somebody spends a die on on moby moby dow is christmas this card so i'll tell you the audience what i'm looking at so i'm looking at like a web page with like a bunch of nfts and uh, they have little graphics associated with them and of course you know titles and then their prices and the quantity and then um you know whether they're um still in in stock or not um but like like what what it what is a normal person 
well not no forget about a normal person like me like an enthusiast <laughs> right what am i gonna do with this still though what are you gonna do with an nft yeah i don't know like it depends on what kind of nft if it is like uh, if it's a key nft so they have like nfts that used for like minting nfts or like NFT yeah. that you do access a community mm-hmm. so in that case it's obvious like what you're gonna do with it yeah. but if it's like an art nft like a collectible then like i don't know like you do the same thing that we do that if you buy like a stick figurine of star wars or some shit sure yeah you just hoard it but, it yeah yeah you buy like a a tablet for you to mount it on your wall or something <laughs> yeah but yeah i think that's part of the reason why why we have them in the profiles because right now people collect them but there's no like cool way of displaying them uh-huh. and so like this this is the one place that like okay so you put your nfts here and then other people can see them and that's why you can break about them. NFTs. yeah like yeah. your ten thousand dollar crypto kitty <laughs> yeah right <laughs> exactly interesting that's that's so uh, you know like pokemon cards they like they came in the 90s and then they died out right mm-hmm. and then and then they made a resurgence again recently right in the past few years mm-hmm. i don't know if mm-hmm. nfts are ever going to be like that though like what making you, a resurgence or getting the big getting that big yeah i don't know i mean it depends like uh, a random nfts won't but i think like people who are like making actual collectibles yeah will probably i mean probably i guess that's what i think yeah is that they will be using uh make minting nfts to like make it uh, provable that it's a unique object yeah so like uh Metherium is using it like they're minting uh, nfts to like go with uh, like actual physical collectibles yeah so like star trek figurines so I think that's that. that's one one good use case, like the yeah. the crypto kitties probably. I mean, probably I don't know. So I don't know what's going to happen with crypto kitties, but like most other NFT projects that are just like projects of their own will probably die out. But I think yeah, like uh, people will be using them the same way that they are that collectibles in general are still like uh, a thing. Like yeah. You can make a NFT for uh, your Pokemon card to to prove that it's yours. And yeah. That. But besides, okay, so besides that use case and access, is there any other utility to having an NFT? So like um, minting and access Mm -hmm. and just rarity, like associating physical one-to-one tracking. So those three use cases, is there anything besides that that NFTs might be useful for? They're also using them for like... uh there's this i think uh, like a house marketplace <laughs> so you can have like you can turn your house in it into an nft oh, like basically like, okay. you mean you know anything can be tokenized yeah so like besides like uh, tokenizing actual physical objects yeah it's like what i mentioned previously is like having them as a customization for your for the way that the website is displayed to you or like i don't know other things are kind of out there but yeah interesting you ever like so i don't do you do you mind if i ask you how old you are no not at all okay. how old are you 26 26 okay 26, yeah. so you i i'm 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 29 i think yeah i'm 29 i'm t- kind of forgetting getting, getting so old <laughs> um so so you've been around with like you know when gaming and i've like uh i never played the game but you probably know of the game second life oh yeah yeah Whatever happened to those people who bought like you know hundreds of thousands of dollars houses in that virtual world? Like, is it even holding its value? I have no idea. Yeah, I wonder. It might be useful to like see because like you know nothing. I feel like I feel like we we're not really making anything new. Like we mm-hmm. are, in some cases, but in some cases we're not. We're just we're just taking an old idea and, and repackaging it. And the new, <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, and just adding like NFTs to it, or like adding I don't know, fucking tokens to it, right? And the psychology mm. of tokenomics is is pretty well understood. Um, mm. Like, I'm just wondering if we're actually going to make anything useful. You know what I mean? I think with NFT specifically, 
it will be useful because it's solving like an actual problem that exists, which is that you can't prove like if it's an authentic uh, collectible. Like if you're buying thing on an eBay, you just don't know like what you're buying. But yeah. With NFT, in theory, you should be able to prove it. Yeah. So with NFT CS, but I absolutely agree that uh, a lot of the space is just recreating the the old systems and just slapping the tokens on top of it, and it's. It's not going to get as far, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well. Hmm. Is there anything else you want to talk to? Or talk about? Mm, yeah, I mean, I could touch on, like, what's the, like, now that we're gone pretty far with the, my meta profile, so the next thing that we're going to be building is what we're calling the meta OS. And it's building on top of the idea that we had, like, originally when starting Meta Game, which is that a lot of these, uh, like, tools and uh, applications and, like, uh, yeah, all of these different uh, things already exist, but they, there's nothing, like, bringing them together. So we have, uh, yeah, like, three books is an identity system, but it's not, it was really integrated inside the dev applications. Then you have, like, a balancer on one website, you have Aragon on other website. Like, yeah. all, the, all the applications had their own websites. And they're all uh, separate. And the idea with metagame was always that we're not going to try to like reinvent the wheel. We're going to try to bring together different uh, all of these different applications that already exist. And so you can see it how we how we did that with Metasys, just using the tools that already exist. Yeah. Then the, my meta profiles are based on three box. And then the idea with uh, the Meta OS is that it's going to be like a single interface where you can integrate uh, other uh, like interactions with other decentralized applications, so that you can yeah, access all of your all of your Ethereum stuff and applications and whatnot from yeah from a single interface. Hmm. Uh, there there were projects like doing something similar, for example, the Insta DApp and things like that for like bringing together making a single interface for interacting with uh, DeFi, mm -hmm. but there isn't a project doing that like uh, general ecosystem. Yeah, that that seems useful to be done as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this whole space is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you kind of feel the same way, but I just, I don't know. Yeah. Nothing really actually works <laughs> in a way. Like I mean, I mean, this year has been pretty good. Like the like things started working, uh -huh. but like on a social layer specifically. Like these, there are these decentralized applications that, yeah, I guess now like DeFi is blowing up, and there's a lot of things that work there. Uh -huh. but like the social infrastructure is non-existent. Like we still right. use Twitter. Like what the fuck? Like, <laughs> still use Twitter. <laughs> And all these other centralized up like yeah, so that, like Corey's yeah. working on status, so like I feel like I feel like having like a a, a messaging centralized right. messaging protocol for for crypto makes sense, right? But somebody needs to do it well, and and <laughs> it needs to get adopted, and <laughs> right. I don't know yeah, how to do that. Yeah, status doing it, like bringing things together into a single interface. Yeah, uh, yeah status is a cool project. Hmm. And what the what was I going to say? Uh, my memory just slipped. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're talking about how, uh, um, how uh, you like. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that, like, not just uh, like communications layer. So like, uh, people use Twitter and uh, I don't know Reddit. Right. But like project management stuff. So like uh, Notion and Airtable and all these tools, things like that, like tools mm -hmm. that are used for building things. Yeah, and even, even GitHub itself, they're all like centralized. I mean, GitHub at least is like when you GitHub itself as a service is centralized, but you can build the projects in a decentralized way. Yeah, so like there's this uh, full push system with reviews and all. Mm -hmm. But like uh, Notion and Airtable and Trello and like all of these different tools for like managing projects are right. made for for top down projects. They're like they're not they don't have like a proper version control. They don't have like a way of actually giving uh, different kind of access levels. Uh, there's, they're not made for like building things in a decentralized way. Okay. And I think that's 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 what we need. So somebody needs to build out the centralized Trello, Notion, 
something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you know, we, we get there. Like the yeah. first thing we we want to build for ourselves after the my meta profiles is the like the questing system. So like the ability to post uh, tasks in a decentralized way. So yeah. We to, yeah. So that we don't uh, <laughs> use Notion you know, that has an admin. Just go there and write a quest, but instead, like, have it so that any player of meta game that has like enough seeds or like wants to stake them, they yeah. can just post a quest. Hmm. If if there is one thing you could fix about what's making what you want to do difficult, what would it be? Hmm. Like, uh, what's my problem right now, or just the Ethereum is a uh... Of this space as a whole uh, no like like your problem for for metagame like if you could fix one thing like maybe it's adoption maybe you want it to get adopted well i mean that, that seems like too easy low-hanging fruit but like mm, besides that. Yeah. i think staking so right now people since it's so like super open that a uh-huh. lot of people just come in they say okay i'm going to do this and then they just don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> you know how it, how it goes and so, like in metagame, we have an idea that, like, just when we started metagame, yeah, since we started metagame, that like we don't want to have it so that like people have this uh, reputation system with like a five star rating. So like you do you rate other people, and like you have your own rating because like that's <laughs> super dystopian. Uh huh. And instead of that, like we want people to stake. So like you want to take a task, you stake, and then if you if you complete a task, you get your stake back plus the pay. If you fail at the task, then you lose your stake. And if you like can't agree with whoever made the quest to like who, if you completed it or not, or, like yeah. it's satisfactory or not, then it could get arbitrated to through like uh, Kleros or some other kind of uh, decentralized that's, arbitration that's exactly system. Exactly what I wanted to work on. So like I have I've had this project idea. So I have this physical product that I made a uh, company around in a in a um physical product um Mm -hmm. and it was it was called boost blocks so it was a gummy um it was it was essentially like a gummified pre-workout which there are only a few on the market and i realized that i could make the product better essentially and so i did right Mm -hmm. um but then i ran out of time because i have other things that i'm trying to do as well in my life um (laughs) so like the company was fine i I, you know the, the business back end production fine but I, I, I couldn't scale it because it was just, you know, me and my sister. And we, we made, mm-hmm. like, many units to test and es- essentially get, like, decent flavor profiles, whatever, right? Um, mm-hmm. Shipping, everything. You know, all the, all the things associated with having a physical product. And then I realized mm-hmm. I do a lot of crypto stuff. At least I, I, I did, you know, a few years back. And then I was like, um, I want to merge the two, right? So, like, the whole idea of using, like, an NFT that pairs with a physical object to give you essential ownership and then also access to the community and also what you were talking about so i think there's this problem of like i'll, I'll put my money here or or, or not, not necessarily not necessarily my money but i'll say that i'm going to do something but maybe i don't do it now that may be because i have other time commitments or whatever but i feel like money speaks to everybody mm-hmm. you know <laughs> if if and and that's exactly the sort of system I wanted to build with Boostbox. It's it's essentially the fact that you stake a certain amount of so like you purchase the physical item, right? I'm just gonna give you my idea because like I the, I'm I'm gonna try and build it so it doesn't matter, but I don't really care. I I'm, I have a million ideas, but anyway, <laughs> um, so you buy the physical product, right? It mint you get you get an NFT associated with that product that's tied to the you know the product SKU. Code, right mm-hmm. and essentially um that nft grants you access to the community and also gives you an initial like say some of the un- like different like a, a different token like an erc20 token i'm never going to use ethereum though because like <laughs> it's it's terrible but anyway um <laughs> the the idea is that you stake a certain amount of real life money so say twenty dollars and since this gummy is essentially the the, go- the underlying usage is productivity, right? Whether you want to 
fucking run a mile or you want to code more, like whatever you're trying to do, right? It's essentially like uh, a productivity product. So it's got caffeine, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of other stuff in it, right? So you stake a certain amount of money, like say $20 for that month, and you commit to a certain amount of like, I'm going to do, you know, X amount of tasks, right? And every time you complete, you know, the task that day, you have like, the whole system is like, you incorporate something like source cred, something like, well, I, I don't actually need source cred, but you incorporate like bright ID for validate, uh, being able to like validate unique people, not, so mm-hmm. it's not just a bunch of bots. Um, and then they, they verify it within each other, within the community. And, right. and then if they can verify the activity that they perform for that day, they unlock a certain rewards associated based on like a percentage of how much they initially staked. If mm-hmm. they don't, whatever they staked is essentially like frozen until, you know, say the end of the, the 30 days that they said they were going to like work out, right? So like every day they're supposed to work out and every day that they don't, they don't get the reward and their money just sits there. So like their $20 is just sitting there versus if they did the activity, they could have unlocked, you know, essentially a percentage uh, a percentage of token rewards based on their initial stake amount. Right. So something like that. Yeah. I feel like everybody's going in that same direction. It's, it's it's like an obvious thing. You know, the psychology is strong of how tokens work. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just need yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. So there's this project called uh, Kickback. Yeah. It's uh, used for for a similar purpose of like uh, it's kind of like the meetup.org, but Okay. instead of like having people rsvp for nothing people have to stake to rsvp okay and then when they attend the event then they get their money back plus the money that uh, other people staked who didn't show up so that's, there's an additional incentive there. that's pretty sweet that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's and a good idea you get the money that other people stake if they don't show up right yeah and we we use this for like organizing a like uh, events uh, when like uh, Berlin blockchain week happened or like uh, during the <laughs> DevCon in, in Osaka. So they, they had this uh, whiskey tasting uh, event uh-huh. which was also using this. But so then when the like Corona hit, they were like, okay, so like if people are not <laughs> organizing <laughs> events, like what do we do is it for now? Yeah. And they started using, they made like a workout group. So like uh-huh. people had to stake uh, 0.1 ETH or something. Yeah. And then they had to like do push ups every day for a month. And we had like a telegram group where everybody would need to like post a video of themselves doing uh push ups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So only only like only a few people failed. <laughs> everybody wanted their hundred dollars back. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like money, you know it works. Money yeah. works. Value. It doesn't have to be money, but it has to be value. And I think I feel like my people can equate that to their time pretty easily. Yeah. And with tokens, everything becomes money. <laughs> everything is That's money. true. That's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, um, it was great having you on, Peter. Um, yeah, great I, talking to you. Yeah, it's great. Great interview. Um, I'm excited for what metagame is going to be building in the future. And um, um, oh, you know what? We have our signature question that. Uh, D and Corey would like me to ask you probably. Um, it's in ten words or less. How would you describe Bitcoin or the blockchain in general? The classic. Why didn't I prepare for this? Why didn't I prepare for this? Because I knew it was coming. Like I remember I this question. <laughs> Wait, how did you remember? I uh, yeah, I used to listen to it. I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't. When when did you join? By the way, like when did you start? Oh, interviewing? so 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 they've been doing it for like I think five years, and then I came on board. Uh, I want to say like three years, two three two mm. years, three years ago, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was listening to it for like uh, 2016 and 17, and then okay. after that I stopped listening to podcasts in general. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Three, it's totally it, 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 it's just two of them back then. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, how do I describe it in ten words or less? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Take your time. I want to just not say something cheesy, but yeah, you you don't have to. 
you can say something cheesy. I'll just say an adminless database. Okay. Okay. An adminless database. And it's three words, not even less. Yeah. Three words. An admin. Yeah, I, think, I think you forgot like the the main point which I wanted to share about metagame. So like the in phase one, it's all about yeah. building this uh, this onboarding machine for like this decentralized world. So like uh-huh. putting putting together all the resources that people need for building decentralized applications and yeah. decentralized organizations. But that's like only until we build this uh, basic structure. And then, like in phase two and three, the idea is that we are going to like yeah, really zoom out of crypto and start focusing on like real world problems. So, like, uh, uh, hopefully, we will solve the onboarding problems and coordination problems in the crypto space, and then we'll be able to focus on like yeah, helping uh, people who are outside of crypto like do their thing. And we already have like people who are like uh, experts in machine learning and other high tech fields, but mm-hmm. we also want to focus on like other real world problems so like getting clean water to people and you know like, <laughs> like actual problems that are not first crypto world problems <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the tagline yeah the tagline on the website is just like build the future that we want to live in yeah so we really want to make it uh, bigger than crypto it's not about crypto man it's not about crypto <laughs> <laughs> good luck you're in crypto it's I don't know. basic info huh yeah it's just the basic infra. I think that after like after we build everything, all the infrastructure, then people will be able to use this technology without even knowing that it's the blockchain. Like nobody will care. The same way that nobody knows that it's like a SQL database. Yeah, nobody will care. That's true. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thanks again, Peter, yeah. for hopping on, and uh, yeah. yeah, thank you for having me. Sometime in the future. Yeah, you should join us. Join us again. I will join. Actually, I'm going to talk to you out- offline. But yeah. All right. Thanks, awesome. everybody, for listening. Metagame.wtf. <laughs> gotta, sh- gotta show it, you know? Gotta plug it. Absolutely. Plug away. Right. And we're back. <laughs> live. Live, 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 live. You know, so. Um, oh, this definitely isn't live. This is a podcast you're listening to. So. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the interview. Google that shit, you know, you know, I hope, you know, the interview that we totally did before we started recording this round table. And, uh, and yeah, so we're going to talk about DeFi now, which if you, if, unless you've been living under a rock, um, DeFi means decentralized finance. And, uh, that's a lot. That's a mouthful, you know? a lot to come out of the mouth but it basically means like you know there's central entities that guide and regulate and sherpa regular finance right there's insurance companies investment banks uh retail banks um bonding banks bonding companies like there's there's all kinds of entities that make up finance as we know it, like loaning mortgage companies. Uh, um, I guess a, I guess a bank just gives out loans. There's no such thing as a loaning in company. It's just a bank. Uh, but they basically run that shit. They run the show. They decide interest rates, all the all everything. And then all there's also like exchanges. Exchanges are are centralized. You got your Nasdaq. You got your CM, uh, what's it? What's the Chicago Mercantile CME, Exchange? The Chicago Mercantile Exchange. You've got, yeah, you got the Nasdaq. You got the New York Stock, the NYSE over in, uh, you know, over in fucking uh, England or UK. You've got that uh, the exchange for currency, the biggest currency exchange on the planet. So, LD. Um, all these are central things. The centralized finance, huh? The London Stock Exchange. What do you say, Jeff? It's like a big one. The stock exchange. All these things are centralized entities that um, basically control the to and from and the from to to. With decentralized finance, you don't have that. For example, with a decentralized exchange, if I wanted to trade with Corey, I could do that, and I don't need the Nasdaq to put you know the kibosh blessing on whatever fake pieces of paper. 
that we do or don't have uh, of the stock or whatever I'm trading with Corey, a, a mutual fund. I don't know, like mutual fund for money. You know, there's no central entity needed. I can go straight from my wallet to Corey's wallet and trade what we want to trade. You don't need an exchange for that. Right. Just my send own, the crypto. Own, um... It's kind of the whole thing of crypto. It's like, I was just... Yeah, that's true. That's very the true. exchange is when you want to like move from one crypto to one, one currency to another. I don't have to rely on some third party to do yeah, that. Yeah. Just people provide liquidity. Anyone provides liquidity that makes pools of whatever pairs that I think I so want to trade. What? The providing with you fix your video you can't, because you can't, that's a lot that's so a much latency i can't really fix the video there's not much i can do it's just wi-fi out here in the cabs bro all right so don't worry about it here i'll just turn it off how about that <laughs> there we go okay. that worked um and so when you provide liquidity you're providing it to a trader that's going to trade with your crypto. And then you get a little fee paid to you. He's like, hey, thank you, sir, for your liquidity. Here you are. And that's how it works, but digitally. With no British accent. Yeah. Like, I, I have a bunch of, like, uh, DAI and S&T and various other currencies and different trading pairs on Uniswap that I provide <laughs> liquidity for. And whenever people use those trading pairs, I get... I get a percentage of the fee. So the fee gets dispersed. I think it's like weighted proportionally to those who provide liquidity. So over time, I just get money for facilitating the ability of other people to make trades they want to trade without relying on others. It's a cool multi-sided market. Yep. My money, my money does work. And now like for like all the stuff that builds on top of that, it's getting really confusing. I don't understand yeah, it, Corey. Yeah, that's where I get a little bit. I, I, I'm reluctant I to dive either. into it because I'm worried about like what I'd become once I understood it. Don't be worried. You should do time. it. You should do it and then report back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see you in a month. Yeah. Just be dangerous with it, right? Be as dangerous as if you had to like, imagine you were caught in the throes of passion. You had no choice but to make love on stairs. You know what I mean? Like, just be dangerous with it. Like, sometimes when, it, when the moment strikes you, you just got to take it down on the stair steps of love. You know? I, don't know and that, so, I don't know if I'm capable of doing that. The stair steps of love. That could be a song. But, you know, you know that you got to sometimes. I know you're a strong guy, Corey. I know you have it in you to make love on stairs. So approach this situation <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Approach the situation like that. That's what I'm about You're to do. Like to go experience all that DeFi has to offer. There's too <laughs> yeah. much. I don't know if I don't know if I could take all that in, man. That's. <laughs> I need to like start softly. It is a lot. And like, you know, get some tickles before you go in. So I'm going that hard because you've tried to take it all at once. It's a fire hose of the face. You're not going to handle it. You're not going to be able. To, you're going to have a bad time. It's going to hurt, <laughs> and and you're not going to come back for it. And you're probably going to be a little like you know traumatized from it for the rest of your life so like i'm not ready for that i gotta like you gotta go slow you gotta <laughs> chill out you gotta like dip your toe in get a little tickle feel it <laughs> see how it goes get the hang of it yeah. then get better at it like that's that's the right methodology for like every dealing with an ocean oh, that is DeFi right now and it's only gonna get bigger right like it's mm -hmm. finance so like the finance bros are gonna take it over and gals, what's the what's the equivalent of bros for girls? Bras. Bro, bras. I get. It. I don't know. Mm. Alicia, Alicia, say it. What is what 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 do you call? Yeah, I get that. Right. The the girl version of a bro. You don't have to say it. You just type it. Chick. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're not listening. Oh, chick. Okay. Yeah. D5 bros and chicks. You said chick. We were very aware mm, I called, I called a woman a chick once, and I got, I got uh, reprimanded. So I don't know well, about that. Maybe it's like, like finance. Uh, what? Keep going. You're, you're, you're latent. You're, 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 we're dealing with your latency. No. 
Oh, my bad. I mean, I was, you know, chicks, I don't think you call chicks. I think that they don't like that. I think. Guys don't like being called bros. Okay. Finance hoes. hoes. Finance hoes. Ooh, bros and hoes. (laughs) (laughs) Can we start? Can we start a DAO that's just called bros and hoes? I don't know what it does. Uh, I think we can, and I think I think it would be extremely popular, like overnight. I don't, I don't know I what it does. Be, I think we're gonna vote on things, and it's gonna have like you have to say bros and hoes. Like there's no, there's no. You can say doctor bro or doctor ho, but there's, you have to say bro and ho. We're but the vote thing on is, like, why? Like like the haters ball. Dudes can be hoes here. too. So. Dudes can be hoes too. In fact, back in the year two thousand and eight, I had some hoish tendencies. So I think I think uh, I don't know. You know, I feel I feel as if it's not gender specific. The bros and hoes thing. Are, are you vaping, Corey? Yeah. How, how do you like vaping? When did that start? Yeah. That's, when did that start? Oh yeah, you vape. It's, it's THC. Yeah. It's, it's like a yeah, it's like an electric electric marijuana yeah you, do you like it sure it's great it's, it's way more convenient than you know just burning it yeah yeah it's also okay. a lot healthier sneaks up on you too core is sneaky like that core kept some can i tell the brownie story oh yeah do that <laughs> <laughs> that was funny Corey. so i was showing a Corey's recently this was like last year and i was like making dinner and I looked in his fridge and I saw like a brownie and I was like, <laughs> like, of course, part of me knew what was going on, but I was like, Aaron bakes all the time. So this could be a legit brownie. So I was like, cool, let me go ahead and take, take a bite of this brownie here. I'm going to break this off and <laughs> eat half of this brownie. Grabs people's brownies in a refrigerator and just decides to take a bite out of it and then put it back. Just, <laughs> I keep going, Dave. Go, ahead. go ahead. I keep going. It and I, I, I broke it in half and then. I ate the half, and then you know, even that's even that's questionable, right? Because breaking some breaking a brownie in half means it's a rather old brownie, right? So yeah, that you, was you weird. broke it because that was it was, was crunchy like, at that point. It's an old like, old like, old brownie. Risk of, that brownie was probably was risk of like six to seven months old. So then, like, we're all eating dinner. It was around Thanksgiving. I remember that. We're all eating dinner, and like, out of the blue, I was just like, "Oh man, something ain't right." Something is not right. So then I like I think I had I think I did a I didn't do a prayer. But like I just stopped and way too serious. I was like, man, I really just want to thank y'all for eating dinner like this, man, in a year like we're having. And I got way too emotional for some reason. And then I sat down on the couch and then like, you know, you ask yourself that question. Like we started watching music videos and the videos were way too good. Like yeah. way too good. I was just like sitting in the corner and I was like, I think I'm high. I don't know how I think I'm high. And then, like, it was just bad. And then I realized I really was high because I asked y'all. I was like, hey, what's up with that brownie that y'all have in the fridge? And y'all were like, what fucking brownie? No, that's not what happened. What that's not about? what happened. That's not what happened. Uh, we, I think I casually mentioned it in conversation. You're like, oh, I had yeah. some of that. <laughs> <laughs> and i've been and like i had some of that and i've been high for a while and i wasn't sure what was going on and i was kind of freaking out and we're like oh why are you just yeah. eating brownies out of people's people's refrigerators <laughs> look i know y'all it's good i didn't know y'all like that though y'all yeah y'all are <laughs> your sneaky, blitz sneaky brownies trying to good. trying to eat dinner like pretending like nothing's going on uh, <laughs> So this conversation went sideways, but decentralized finance. So what you need actually <laughs> is a Web3 capable wallet. All right. That's going to, you'll find that MetaMask, you'll find that Coinbase wallet. I'm pretty sure status. Yep. Status, you can connect to Web3 things with status as well. It's and you, you put MO. a bunch of Ether, <laughs> throw, throw a bunch of fucking, uh, throw a bunch of ETH in that shit. Throw a bunch of USDC, maybe some DAI, maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of stability. You know, you need some stable coins mostly. Um, you know, maybe a little compound, and then you can like start exploring on Uniswap. I think there's other things too, right? I think I'm missing some things. Uniswap is like the most popular. 
Uh, there's a lot. It's it's you know, w- one thing I will say is if you join the Slack, and you go to hashtag DeFi, there are like tons, dozens of people that will educate you, and like give out time of their day to help you get started. I've seen YouTube videos being linked. I've seen there step are step by step currently, um, twenty six members. Only 26, actually. There's like 750 in the chat so and the whole Slack. There's 26 people in this Slack, and it is active. And these people know what they're talking about and doing, and they're up to date. So if you're interested in that type of yeah. stuff, it's a good place to be. Yeah, I'll do it if you do it for you. Some of them. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> so let me finish some of that stuff first. Yeah. So we're going to be, us at the Bitcoin Podcast, we're going to be DeFi DGens, and we're going to fucking ape out I think that's the lingo that they're using, and uh, then I'll return. I've already degened a little bit, you know. Yeah, I'll you got to start going on, on the next episode. Yeah, I'm a degenerate, bro. I have, like I said, I have, I have staking pools. Like I, I provide liquidity for assets on Uniswap. That's it. That's only DeFi right. that I've that I've participated in. Weak. You got to up your DeFi game. Mm. Yeah, and I've, made, I've made like eighteen dollars. That's that. It's like that. That the return is not that. I also, it's a. I do it because I would like to provide liquidity for particular pairs on SNT, so that when people want to change, if they get SNT, they're able to on Uniswap. That's why I do it. I'm not doing it for the money. Uh, yeah, and I just haven't like like JT is uh, part of Badger DAO and the Slack. And he like he's been he had he wasn't doing any of this stuff before he, when, when he joined the Slack. He, he had learned all this stuff, started talking about it, asked his questions, talked with people on the Slack, created this thing, and it's going wild. Yeah, <laughs> so Badger like, DAOs like were a crazy amount right now. It's, it's know, definitely made JT. some gains. They've made some gains. Hopefully, we'll like, be I, I think it's interesting JT that like too. people have created stuff in our Slack. I mean that. It, I don't. I'm not gonna say they did it because of us, but like they've been, a, we've been along for the ride the entire time, and yeah. they're still here, spending their time like in the community talking about it with a bunch of the people who. Yeah. I can't. I. I'm not even sure I can name all the people who've gotten jobs or have created something. Yeah. Um, in the process of this being is, in our Slack. Yeah. So in case you haven't noticed, audience member, you should join the Slack. You go to the BitcoinPodcast.com, push the button that says Slack. Follow the directions. If you can't do that, you're not worthy. I'm serious. If you can't follow those directions, you should not be doing DeFi. Slack. Yeah, and you shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't even trust <laughs> yourself with your own money. All right, I'll tell you that right now. If you can't follow those directions, you need to. You need to rethink a lot of things in your life. All right, join the Slack. Hang out with us. We talk about a lot of things. Uh, there was this huge Bernie Sanders. There's a meme off going on yesterday that had me fucking dying laughing. That was great. Um, and, you know, you know, we're talking to going to join the Slack. You know, you can talk DeFi, you can talk Bitcoin, you can talk Ether, you can talk Avalanche. There's a whole there's a whole channel dedicated to Avalanche now. That's pretty popular, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, so that's one thing. Another thing is subscribe, subscribe, like ding the bell. You know what they say? That's what the cool kids say. No, no, no. Just subscribe in your podcast app if you like what you heard. And then if you go to the BitcoinPodcast.com, we have other podcasts, um, you know, that you should be able to access from older shows that we did back in the day. You know, there was once in a time Blue Moon where we did speak to, like, beginner level aspects of Bitcoin and Ether. And those are just so many episodes ago. But we don't, we don't want you to feel left out. You know, we threw some. Sorry for my name. We threw some sauce on uh you know those basically fundamental aspects of this these cryptocurrencies and these blockchain networks so um what else do we do oh this show is brought to you by whatever shampoo jesse uses on his hair uh because Mm, mm, mm. because that that hair right there i'm serious he could go to a third world country right now and he'd run it by tomorrow like he'd run it by the next day they'd be like i don't know who this guy is but he looks like he knows what the fuck he's talking about I feel like the only right, person so just... I have hair in common with is like Fidel Castro. Really? Quality well, choice, there man. There you go. Right? There you go. <laughs> so, like, I, I, I really. Yeah. 
That's what I'm saying, bro. Get yourself some cool pon- layered ponytail shits and go to, go to uh, go to Argentina and just tell them, hey, uh, look, I'm running the show now. My name is Jesse. Right? So give me all the papers. All right? Give me all the and, papers. Um, and uh, let's make it a fish. Let's make it a fish. No. Um, this show was actually brought to you by Avalanche, I think. Right? We ran that ad. So, anyway. You drunk? Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not drunk at all. No. We already said uh, that's uh, over. We said like uh, 14 times. No, I'm trying to wrap up the show. What are you, are you wrap up the show? You wrap. I'll make it real simple. Join the Slack. Join the Patreon. Ooh. You get shit for that. D's got some shout outs. He wants to make to some ladies. Here you go. That's true. <laughs> shout out. Shout out to Megan the Stallion. Uh, shout out to Lori Harvey, who I found out is Steve Harvey's daughter and um, is amazing. Um, shout out to Michelle Obama and shout out to Georgia Curtis. All right. All right. Wrap it up, dude. You got the you got the close outline. That's all you, man. Oh, okay. I thought you guys were gonna give shout outs too, but I guess oh, I'll, I'll do a quick shout okay. out. Play. Shout, shout out. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh shit! Drop it. Shout, shout out to Daniel and Alicia. I'm gonna say that every every week. Ooh. Shout out to Daniel and Alicia. Ooh. Everybody. Back end. Yeah. Appreciation of the back end. Seriously. No. That was not you a guys... sexual joke. That is a technology joke. Yeah, for sure, Daniel. Appreciate <laughs> all that, you, dude. Oh, Same I... with Alicia. Securing the interviews, man. Dealing with people on Twitter. That seems difficult. Holler. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't like Twitter. Not at all. So hats off to you guys. I thought you were gonna give a sh- give a shout out to your to your mom and your sister and stuff, but no, I don't care about them, Jesse. Um, so only money. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you for it. How was the escape ski click on that bad boy? I'll I'll have to link you a video. You can you can make the uh, the judgment yourself, D. I'm gonna do another shitty unboxing. No, 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 no. How much did you pay for it? How much did you pay for it? Oh, no, dude. Let's do a shit, another shitty unboxing on the show of your new keyboard. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I got to buy some more stuff because apparently, you know, you got to buy more stuff with the keyboard, right? Like, it's just the frame. You got to buy the switches. Yeah, we're we're got... going to do a shitty unboxing of that frame. Okay. All right. And you're going to walk us through and we're going to make fun of you for it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wait, can you guys fund the keycaps? Like, I mean, we could probably get a yeah, so. podcast to do it. Okay. All right. Let, let's see if we can like maybe I can get us like keyboard sponsor for for what we do. That'd you do that, cool. and I'll be very happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll okay. I'll say <laughs> thick sock and thick and fat <laughs> all day long. If you get a sponsor for keyboards. Okay. All right. I'll see what I can do. All right. Yeah. That'd be exciting. You got to start the unboxing. Like you got to start the unboxing by saying, "Hey guys," and then you're yeah. good to go. Want to so, tell you about uh, the Type sixty three keyboard? It's got so and so 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 backplate. Oh God! I want How you to do they do all the whole talk thing. the same? Everyone. All, talk the same. <laughs> all right, play the outro. <laughs>